thinking about some of the criticisms that you've received. I was just looking online uh, tonight, just at one, uh, some of the, on, under some of the reviews. It's saying that really to draw the parallel that uh, America is similar to Israel in this sense is, is just not biblical because America is not mentioned in Scripture at all. So how would you answer that? Okay, well, yeah, that's, that's a, a misunderstanding because the... the Harbinger never says that America is mentioned in Scripture or that Isaiah is speaking about America. What it says is very something very biblical and very solid, that God, number one, God is just, and he does bring judgment of sin, and he judges nations. Number two, he warns before he judges. And number three, he acts in a way that's consistent with his ways and his word. And so what it's saying is that in Isaiah, there's a biblical template of judgment, of national judgment. And that biblical template is actually coming true, specifically reappearing in America. And it's not like I sat there and said, well, you know, let me try to see if this could connect. The fact is it's happening. I mean, happening so eerily that most people, when they hear it and they start seeing these things, they, they're just shocked. But it's happening that way. Like, for instance, an example, one of the harbingers in the book, the, the fifth harbinger is called the stone of judgment or uh, th uh, this is in the vow. It says the bricks are fallen, but we will rebuild with hewn stone. So the people of Israel say, God, you're not going to humble us, and we're going to rebuild, not with clay bricks, but we're going to come back stronger. So here's an act of defiance. And they go up to the mountains of Israel, because the Hebrew word in that vow is the word gazit. Gazit stone is a stone that's chiseled out of mountain rock or quarry or mountain rock, and th these massive rectangular blocks of stone. And they, they are, they're stronger, they can build higher and bigger. So what they do is they, they do this in ancient Israel, they chisel them out, they bring them back to the ground of destruction where the clay bricks fell. They lay it on the, on the ground and they vow to rebuild higher, bigger, stronger than ever. And this is their, in a sense, their stone of defiance. Yes. Well, yes. after 9-11, the people of New York, they go up to the mountains of New York and they go up to a mountain, they quarry out a stone. It's a biblical gazit stone. It's, for, it's 20 tons of rock. It's a rectangular, massive block of stone. According to the mystery, this fifth harbinger, it ha they have to bring it to the place of destruction. So they take this stone, they bring it to New York City, they bring it to ground zero, where the bricks had fallen. They lower it on the pavement of ground zero. They have a ceremony around the stone. They have leaders of, of New York and New Jersey, the governors, the mayor, and they all they pronounce vows of defiance over the stone, saying this stone is a symbol that we're America's gonna come back stronger than before. They have no idea what they're doing. They don't, they're not planning to do what Israel did, but they're doing exactly that. And when you read the commentaries on Isaiah 9:10, when it talks about them laying the stone, the commentaries say they do this in the quote, spirit of defiance. You hear that phrase again and again, the spirit of defiance. That's what Israel did. But when they laid the stone, the governor of New York says, we are laying this stone in the spirit of defiance. So here is, that's the, that's the, just, that's the, the stone or the fifth harbinger.